Eric Tov, covering I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Very serious news breaking. The seventh Russian ambassador to be found dead. Once again, Russian ambassador found dead. The Sudanese uh, Russian ambassador to Sudan has been found dead there in his home. Uh, there is still sketchy reports as of right now as the cause of death. There are there have been many conspiracy reports or conspiracy theories that have been coming out as to whether or not why all of these Russian ambassadors have died. It is very unusual. There were six ambassadors, I believe, in the space of two or three months there back at the beginning of the year that have died. Now we have a seventh ambassador to die. This is beyond, friends, conspiracy theories. This is a genuine, real uh, act that has taken place here. Very troubling indeed. And I, I am just uh, very much concerned that there is more behind this than meets the eye. Uh, and it's not only just that. And we'll come back to that in just a moment because I did a little bit of investigation between uh, the Sudanese uh, ambassador there as well as the uh, one of the ambassadors, the latest one that was ambassador to the United Nation, Mr. Cherkin, who also died, did a little bit of investigation on these two men here. Uh, didn't do it on all of them, but I wanted to kind of get an idea of maybe why they might be targets and might be a surprise you. We'll go into that in just a moment here. But uh, there, there was a meeting that took place though today between uh, President Putin and, of course, there was Foreign Minister Lavrov as well as the Secretary of State from uh from the Vatican itself. Petro, Mr. Petro Porlin, uh, is, is who was actually meeting with the Pope, uh, uh, Parlin, I think is how you call his name there. Uh, they met with Vladimir Putin today in his residence in Sochi. Um, and keeping in mind earlier today too, President Putin was meeting with uh, foreign, excuse me, uh, Pr Prime Minister Netanyahu of Israel, Prime Minister Netanyahu of Israel, making it quite clear to President Putin that he will not allow the building of military bases or the presence of the Iranian military forces inside of Syria, and that he would continue to defend uh, Israel from an Iranian presence in this country there. Putting uh, President Putin in a very awkward position and dealing with the crisis there in Syria, but then again, Prime Minister Netanyahu is the backing of President Trump, who has also been working with the Kurds in order to carve out a state for the Kurds in the eastern part of the country there to be able to guarantee the oil richness of that part of the country for themselves. Very, very concerning situation that we see that it continues to develop inside of Syria. Uh, but coming back to this particular issue here, this was very troubling for me to see that Russia having th the ties that are getting closer and closer. Clearly, Russia is on the verge of falling into the trap of the New World Order. Now, I have a friend of mine that's a very close, uh, 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 very close ties to the Syrian president as well as to uh, some of the members of the Russian administration there that has shared with me that there are many of the people there in the Russian administration, especially that of uh, uh, Maria Zakharova and others that are dead set against the New World Order. But I'm afraid that President Putin may be leaning in that direction because of the crippling sanctions that have been placed on his country uh, by a lot of the NATO members trying to cripple the country down into submission. And I think all the deaths of these ambassadors is no coincidence. In fact, when we begin to look at some of them, you'll see that they clearly oppose some of the uh, ideology of the Vatican to begin with, and maybe this is why they have been removed from power, showing that the Jesuits are still controlling this world. Now, before I get into that, though, let me go back into this article right here. As I begin to read the discourse that the Kremlin's website posted about this uh, particular meeting here, one of the things that really caught my eye was that they, of course, they are continuing to work on their normalized relationships between not only the state of Russia and that of the Vatican, but also of the Russian Orthodox Church trying to mend the ties there. And the Vatican did something that I believe that the Vatican is planning on doing to Israel, and it is probably the very thing that clinched the relationship between, the, between Russia and the Vatican, and that was the Vatican return part of the remains of St. Nicholas, which had been stolen from the Russian Orthodox Church back in 1057, they had returned that back in May of this year to the Russian Orthodox Church there. There was a big uh, to-do about this. Uh, and uh, let me just read to you a little bit of the words here from Vladimir Putin. He says, All Russian Christians express special thanks to you and to Pope Francis for this and our 
uh, and all art lovers express great thanks to you for organizing the exhibition of works from the Vatican's museum at the uh, Tretio Cava Gallery. As you know, we are now preparing a recepro reciprocal event, the exhibition of the spiritual heritage of the Russian art from icon paintings to avant-garde. With your help, this exhibition will take place in 2018. Uh, then the, uh, the Secretary of State for the Vatican, Petro, says here, Parolin, of course, as you mentioned, our diplomacy uh, comprises various levels and covers the political spectrum and also various cultural initiatives that we pursue. I see a new dynamic that has emerged over the recent months and years in relations between the two churches. I hope that all our participants in this process will continue working in this direction in order to expand our cooperation and bring us even uh, uh, closer together. So unless something uh, uh, derails what's going on between Russia and the Vatican, we're about to see Russia under full control of Rome. And at that point, a complete one world order, one world government, and Russia would certainly be victim of this. Now, let me just show you this. The relics that they're speaking about, this is where we get St. Nicholas from, or Christmas. Uh, relics of Saint uh, who inspired the legend Father Christmas leave Italy for the first time in 1,000 years and return to, uh, the, uh, to Russia itself. Now, again, why am I so concerned about this? It's not the issue of St. Nicholas or the legend of Christmas. I'm not into this, uh, this ideology to begin with. But this is exactly what Rome is holding over Israel's head. And this is exactly what Rome will do with the Jewish nation as well. They have the golden menorah. They have many of the artifacts that belong to the temple because we know it was ransacked by the Romans. It was taken back. The Ark of Titus clearly shows the relics that they stole from the third, uh, the second temple there, uh, uh, Herod's temple, and those will be used in order to coerce Israel into following into the Vatican's full authority, if they haven't already got them into the full authority, uh, but it'll definitely cause the Orthodox community to come more into compliance with the Vatican's demands, bringing about a one world religion, an antichrist system, a beast system, you name it, it'll all come together. All right, now, Bringing that out, let's go back to the Russian ambassador here, uh, Margayas uh, Sharinsky. And his death, the one here, the, uh, the ambassador to Sudan, he was also the ambassador to Yemen. Uh, he's been the ambassador to many different posts for, for the Russian government there, Rwanda, Saudi Arabia, and now this man has been found dead. But what I find interesting is, uh, also we take, for example, the six ambassadors that were killed earlier, unexpected deaths of six Russian diplomats in four months triggers conspiracy theories. It's no longer conspiracy theories, it's conspiracy, period. Uh, many are suggesting that it is a Jesuit uh, plot to take these men out. Now, in the case here of Mr. Cherkin, Vitaly Cherkin, who's 64 years old, died in the United States uh, as, as he uh, left the embassy there. One of the things that I found very interesting was in an article here on asianews.it, in an Italian news uh, source here, it was speaking about how that Vatican sources in Damascus, some of the... Uh, some of the uh, key people in, in, from, the, from the Catholic Church there, the nuncio of Damascus, was actually declaring that the sarin gas and chemical weapons were certainly being used by President Bashar al-Assad. Well, it was just so happened it was Mr. Vitaly Cherkin who was absolute adamant against the findings of the Catholic Church uh, and, and basically called it a flat out lie. And of course, we do know the evidence shows that the church was certainly covering up for the, the different fighting factions, the Free Syrian Army, Al-Qaeda, and the rest of them that are trying to overthrow Bashar al-Assad. Why? Because Bashar al-Assad stands for the Eastern Church and not for the, for the Roman Catholic Church there. Uh, nonetheless, we also saw in the Sudanese uh, ambassador as well that he too was opposing the ICC, the International Criminal Court, saying that it should be replaced. This came out back in uh, December 5th of 2016. He talked about that there would be a new way. Uh, mechanism comes via an, uh, an, an uh, uh, 
imitative of a Chinese government support by Russia, pointing out that this mechanism is based on joint understanding between the different countries and governments and the positive participation of the majority of countries in the, in the world. He stated that the new mechanism will be headed by one country or a group of countries and adding that the ICC was gradually transferred into a mechanism of punishing persons, countries, and governments for political reasons. So therefore, he too became a, a problem for the uh, United Nations, a, a, an organization pretty much founded by uh, the Vatican itself to begin with. And so, again, another reason why maybe he's not so favored after all. Uh, what about the rest of these guys? Well, maybe there are some more things that we could dig up about them. I don't know exactly what everything would be, but as we already brought this out, the Vatican pulled out from the Sud Sudanese meeting there and uh, on Zero Hedge, they had brought out uh, every, every single death that had happened uh, during that four-month period there, uh, Peter uh, Poloshkov that was uh, killed, Andrei Karlov, uh, Vitaly Cherkin, uh, also uh, Alexander uh, Karikin, Andrei Malanin, and uh, Oleg Arovinkin. These were the six that were assassinated back early, or late last year and early part of the first part of the year. Uh, six ambassadors in a four-month period. I thought it was two months. I apologize for that. Uh, and now the seventh one has come down as well. There's still tensions on the world that are rising. And this article right here from DEFCON talking of pre preventive war rises in White House over North Korea. That's a new terminology, isn't it? Forget the idea of preemptive strike. Now we're going to do a thing called preventive war. In other words, go in there and bomb the nuclear facilities inside of North Korea, and that should solve the problem with, for North Korea. Remember, Russia did say if the U.S. targets those nuclear facilities, Russia would step in because it would cause a uh, nuclear catastrophe for the eastern part of their country. Will Russia step in or not? I don't know. After the Secretary of State, in his closing comments to the Russian uh, president there, President Putin there, it kind of makes it look like, well, it still could go wayward the wrong way, but they're trying to bring Russia in line with the New World Order policies. I have a feeling the Vatican already controls China as well. We just are probably too, too blind to see that. China and Russia defend Pakistan against Trump's strategy. That's another new hot spot starting to brew up in the world there. Doesn't look good, friends. It really, so much things are at odds. And I can't help but this is all a Vatican plan to begin with. Why? Because as I stated before, they want to destroy nationalism and replace it with the New World Order. Well, the only way to destroy nationalism is to have the two superpowers fight it out. Once they end up leaving everybody in a total wreck and millions of people dead, it'll also kind of help contribute to the uh, Guidestones in Georgia there, reducing the population down to 500 million people on the earth. That way they could say that's manageable. Uh, and then after they do that, well, now they can start all over with a one world government. The Vatican will be at the head of the one world religion. Don't think that the Vatican won't control the one world government. They sure will. They'll do it just like they did during communism uh, when they toppled the Tsars of Russia, put in Lenin, who was a Jesuit trained communist, atheist, wasn't really an atheist. He was just making sure that the Vatican became the, well, the state religion, no longer the Russian Orthodox Church. Don't say that either one is really better than the other, but my point is there was no freedom of religion. And if you don't think that the Catholic Church, the Vatican was not the state religion, my wife lived in communism and she could not get into medical school unless she converted to Catholicism. Tell me they didn't run things in communism. They certainly did. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.